Si alguien me pudiera decir qué es, qué está creciendo ahí en mi piedra. Ha crecido demasiado rápido. Imagine finding something truly alien. I mean, really alien. Something that seems to just defy everything we know about life on Earth. Not just, you know, a rock from space but an unknown organism actually growing on a meteorite? What if it didn't need air or food? What if it actively avoided sunlight, almost like some kind of cosmic vampire? Today we're plunging headfirst into a really fascinating claim that will absolutely explode it across certain corners of the internet. It features something so visually striking, its discoverer nicknamed it Venom. Yes, just like the Marvel character. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit. Our deep dive today is into the, let's say, intriguing story of this Venom meteorite. We'll explore the pretty wild claims surrounding this supposed discovery, uh, delve into the scientific hypothesis sort of brings to mind panspermia, and then we'll connect it to the wider cultural landscape. You know, unexplained phenomena, why these stories grab us. Our mission, as always, is to extract the most important nuggets of knowledge, the key insights from the sources we looked at, so you walk away well-informed and maybe a little more critical. Yeah, what's really fascinating here is how just one single unverified claim can touch upon so many different areas. You've got scientific thought, public imagination, maybe even our need for these big stories. So we're looking at this alleged discovery. An organism doesn't need air or food, actively avoids sunlight, and it's reportedly growing from a meteorite. This instantly brings up panspermia, which is, you know, an incredibly intriguing hypothesis, but it's faced a significant scrutiny in mainstream science. We'll definitely get into why that is. Right. So if the universe is constantly, you know, sending us new material via meteorites and dust, what does this specific venom story mean for how we understand claims of life beyond Earth and how do we sort the fact from the fiction? Let's dive in. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting, especially when you think about just how audacious the claim is, right? Yeah. The core of this story, as our sources laid out, is this user's post. They claim they found a meteorite and something unknown is visibly growing from it. And like we said, it's dark, sort of fluid-like look prompted the nickname Venom, leaning right into that pop culture thing. Definitely makes for a catchy headline, doesn't it? Instantly recognizable. Exactly. But beyond the name, the supposed characteristics are just extraordinary. Even by sci-fi standards, it reportedly doesn't need air or food which are pretty fundamental for, well, almost all life we know on Earth. And maybe even weirder, it actively avoids sunlight. These aren't just wild claims. They suggest something operating under totally different biological rules, something uh, from the cosmos that just defies our terrestrial understanding. Precisely. I mean, for life here, food isn't just stuff. It's an energy source, right? Organic compounds, photosynthesis using light, and air usually means gases vital for metabolism, like oxygen. So an organism that supposedly avoids light and doesn't need conventional food or air, that fundamentally challenges our definition of life. Yeah, how does it even get energy? Exactly. What is its energy source? How does it do basic things like, you know, biosynthesis? These claims aren't just sensational. They point to a biochemistry we just we don't understand or maybe haven't found yet. So connecting it to the bigger picture, these traits feel designed to be compelling, truly alien. It points right at a non-earthly origin and grabs our curiosity about what else might be out there. Hmm. These really extraordinary characteristics they're attributing to venom, well, they can't help but make us wonder about life beyond Earth. And when we think about how life might get here from somewhere else, there's one really big, fascinating scientific concept that immediately jumps out. Panspermia. You might have heard the term maybe floating around, but let's define it clearly for a deep dive because it's got layers. Right. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists, you know, throughout the universe and it gets distributed by space dust, meteoroids, asteroids, things like that. It suggests life could have started somewhere else, maybe Mars, maybe further traveled through space and then seeded Earth rather than starting right here. So life is a cosmic traveler. Essentially, yeah. Moving from planet to planet, hitching rides on interstellar debris. Now, within panspermia, there are some distinctions to make. General panspermia suggests life spreads passively, almost like an accident, just clinging on. Okay, but our sources also mention something called directed panspermia. That sounds a bit more intentional. How is that different? That's a really crucial distinction. General panspermia is passive dispersal. 
Directed panspermia, well, it takes it a step further. It suggests life being intentionally spread, maybe by an advanced civilization seeding worlds, or even organisms evolved for space travel deliberately deploying themselves. The Venom story, with its implication of this highly adapted, resilient alien life growing right off a meteorite, it kind of nudges people towards that more purposeful idea, doesn't it? Even if the claim itself doesn't say it was intentional. Now, our sources are really clear on this. Panspermia in all its forms is categorized as a fringe theory with little mainstream scientific support. That sounds pretty definitive, especially for such a captivating idea. Why is it still on the fringes? That's a really important question, isn't it? It's not just that there's no direct proof. It's also the inherent difficulty in getting that proof. For a hypothesis to move from just an intriguing idea to an accepted theory, it needs more than a good story. It needs a solid way to test it repeatedly. Right, the scientific method. Exactly. Yeah. How do you reliably recreate, say, millennia of space travel in a lab to see if microbes survive? How do you prove something didn't originate on Earth without, you know, a sample from its home world? Mainstream science relies on observable, repeatable evidence, stuff you can test critically. And panspermia, well, it largely lacks that right now. We can't just point to a meteorite and say, yep, cosmic life survived the trip. So while the idea of life traveling through space is undeniably cool and, yeah, a big part of science fiction, these specific claims about venom, the rapid growth, no air, no food, avoids light, they need actual, solid, empirical backing. And our sources tell us that evidence is, well, entirely absent for this claim. It's a fantastic story. But right now, it seems to be just that, a story. Hmm. So empirically, the venom claim, like panspermia itself, kind of struggles. But lack of hard evidence. Well, it rarely stops a good story, does it? Especially one that touches on these deep curiosities. Which brings us to the broader context. Hmm. Why do stories like venom grab our imagination so strongly, even without proof? What's the likelihood of something like this being real, given everything we've just discussed? The likelihood of it being real is, unfortunately, probably quite low. And this is due to a few key things our sources point out. First, just the complete absence of verifiable evidence. You know, the saying, extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. And here, there's none. No samples, no independent checks, no scientific analysis reported. Nothing concrete. Nothing. Second, there's a long, long history of hoaxes and misinterpretations with similar claims. Everything from people finding weird industrial slag, meteor wrongs and thinking it's from space, to deliberate fakes for attention or just misidentifying normal Earth biology. This history makes scientists understandably very cautious. It makes sense. And those sensational characteristics. Intriguing, yes. Designed to pique interest, absolutely. But ultimately, they lack the empirical backing needed for science to accept them. Without that, it stays firmly in the realm of... Well, unsupported assertion. But there's another layer here that's just as interesting, even if venom itself isn't scientifically proven. The original post mentioning venom and then immediately expecting government intervention. Yeah. That reflects the narrative we see all the time around UFOs, UAPs, unidentified aero phenomena. It taps into a well-worn cultural trope almost. You've absolutely hit on a crucial point there. Themes of secrecy, classified info, government cover-ups. They're not just common. They tap into these deep-seated human anxieties and desires. You know, a longing for meaning, distrust of authority, the allure of some hidden truth. Only a few know. Yeah, that feeling of they know something we don't. Exactly. So the Venom claim isn't just presented as a biological puzzle. It plays right into that widely recognized narrative, secret knowledge, what they don't want us to know. And that resonance with existing stories partly explains why it might gain traction, why it connects with certain audiences, even with zero proof. It just fits a familiar, compelling pattern. So it's almost like these stories fill a kind of psychological need mm -hmm. for grand narratives, for a sense that there's more going on than the official version. And it's not just random online posts either. Our sources mentioned UAP disclosure hearings, the kind reported by places like Defense Coop. What does this bigger movement tell us about right now, where these topics are actually being discussed officially? Precisely. It indicates this broader context, right? Increasing public and governmental interest in unexplained phenomena. Now, while these hearings show a real shift, society is more open to discussing things that were once pure speculation, moving them into mainstream discourse. It's really crucial to understand that this general interest in UAP does not automatically validate the specific venom meteorite claim. Not at all. Okay, that's an important distinction. 
Yeah, it just highlights that there's fertile ground for these kinds of stories to pop up and get attention. People are more open to the idea of the unknown, which also means potentially more susceptible to extraordinary claims, whether they have evidence or not. It's this complex mix of genuine curiosity, public interest, and maybe our human tendency to seek out the extraordinary. So wrapping this up, what does it all mean for us? We've sort of peeled back the layers of this Venom meteorite claim. We've separated the captivating online story from the uh, tough demands of scientific evidence. We've seen how the grand idea of panspermia, while really inspiring, faces these huge hurdles, mostly a profound lack of testable empirical proof. And we've also connected the specific claim to that broader cultural fascination, haven't we? With unexplained phenomena, UFOs, UAPs, government secrecy. How those narratives create a space where stories like this can really thrive, even without solid, verifiable evidence. It's a powerful reminder, I think, that while imagination is great, the search for truth always needs to be grounded in critical thinking and actual verifiable facts. Yeah. While the Venom meteorite might just be a hoax or a misidentification or something else entirely, that human desire to understand where life came from, our place in the cosmos, that's very real, incredibly powerful. And that quest in itself is a journey worth continuing. Fueled by curiosity, absolutely, but always grounded in that critical thinking. Which really raises an important question for you, the listener, to maybe think about. In this age where we're just flooded with information, where extraordinary claims can spread like wildfire online, often wrapped up in really compelling stories, how do you personally weigh those claims? How do you balance that allure of the unknown, the excitement of potential discovery, with the critical, sometimes difficult need for verifiable evidence before you accept something as, well, true? 